So it's been a while since I've created a new video for the WordPress online contract plugin. Um, this one is going to cover version 5.0.4, but it should be the same for version 5 and up uh, with a few additional features. So if you have version 5, you can always upgrade to version 5.4 and up. Um, the previous videos that I did would cover um, anything below version 5 of the plugin. But this is, I'm just going to go through real quick how you can set it up initially and how you can uh, use the plugin for the most part. So this is using our demo website. So you can see this exact same setup whenever you go to test out the demo. Um, if you've already got this installed on your website, um, then you know how to install the plugin um, and you know how to activate it. Once it's activated, you won't be able to see any of these menu items. The only one that you would be able to see is the purchase code. And inside the purchase code, you would just simply type in your purchase code from Code Canyon and hit update key, and then all of these other options will appear. So nothing else will be visible until you hit update here. Also one thing to note, if you are using this on a multi-site installation, our plugin does not work on multi-site, so you would have a big red notification up here um, because it's uh, the way that the routing is done right now, it just doesn't work. I'm working on an add-on for it, so be on the lookout for that, but for now just you know if you see that big red box saying that you have a multi-site installation um, the plugin is not going to work and you should probably install it on a subdomain or uh, you know something like that that's outside of the multi-site installation um, also one thing to note is that whenever you um, set up the plugin on your website it cannot be installed in a subfolder it would have to be installed in a subdomain like this um, that is because again it's the way that the plugin works. It doesn't work on subfolders or multi sites. So that's kind of the two options that you have. One other thing to note um, whenever you're setting up our plugin, before you install it, in order to get the best out of it, you need to have your permalinks for WordPress set at uh, post name. Um, so you can't be using the ID format, you can't be using. Um, the blog format. I mean, if you want to use that on your current website, you can, and you can just install this on a subdomain all by itself. But our plugin expects it to have um, the post name uh, permalink settings. Okay, so since that's out of the way, we're going to get into actually setting up the plugin and configuring it. So, whenever you first get into your website or into your plugin, you're going to want to go to your settings. This information is required in order for you to be able to create a contract. If you do not have this information, then it will give you a notice whenever you go to add a new contract. So for example, if I remove the company name and then hit save, if I go to add a new contract, it's going to say before creating a contract, make sure you finish the setup. And we need to create short codes, contract templates, and then enter in our company name. So let's go back over here to our company name and put in company name and then the rest of the information you just fill out as per what you need. Um, the contract permalink is pretty um, important as well. This will be what actually dim uh, what is actually showed at the top uh, in your URL bar. So right now if we go to a contract it's going to be onlinecontract.futuredesigngroup.com slash contract. If we change this to something like contracts or contract test that permalink will change. So that way you have a little bit of branding ability if you want it. Um, so you enter in your company name, your administration email. If you don't enter in an email here, it will use the WordPress administration email that you set up inside of your settings for WordPress. Um, but it is recommended to have the email that you want. The email is to be sent to whenever a client signs a contract or whenever something gets initiated by the client for, for them to sign this is where it will send it to or it will default to your administrative email for WordPress. Um, the rest of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. This just displays things in a certain way so if you have um, a price set up you can actually you know use this currency symbol inside of the contract template. Um, we have our date formats, date picker format. So the difference between these two are this is the date format that you want to be displayed so whenever someone signs a contract this is the date format that will appear at the bottom of the contract as well as in the audit log. The date picker format is um, 
whenever someone is picking a date, whether it's you or whether it's them, there it's going to be displayed in this format. So right now, you can see this one is date or day, month, year. This one is also day, month, year, but it's a different format than the date format. So if you try to use day, month, year here, you're actually going to have 2020, 2020, or you're just going to have 20. So just keep in mind that this is a PHP format. This is more of a JavaScript format. Uh, we also have down here where you can auto redirect initiated contracts. Please read the information. Um, so basically this is whenever someone creates a contract it'll automatically redirect them to sign it so that they can fill out the information on that contract and you just have to keep in mind that if you're doing something that has a project price or something like that it won't display on that contract if it's auto initiated or auto redirected um, so auto initiated you can go in there and set it up so whenever a customer fills out the form you can go in there and put the price and then publish it and then they'll get a notification they can sign it but if you auto redirect them it takes whatever information they put into it and pushes it out to the contract so kind of like a terms of service agreement rather than a full-fledged contract with variable options um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this the way it is and then once uh, if you are not redirecting it automatically this is the notification that they will receive whenever they submit that form and I'll show you how to grab that form in just a second um, next whenever you have a user that signs this contract specifically you can redirect them to another URL or you can use the redirection inside of the contract itself to redirect them to another URL after they sign it from within the contract so all of this is kind of auto redirected and then the rest of it you can do from the contracts itself um, and then use font awesome icons that's pretty self-explanatory your signature message uh, this is where what would display above the place where the contract will be signed by the client so you can either leave something here or not put something here um, it doesn't really matter um, our contract plugin will automatically add something there for you based on the defaults that are set. If you add something, it'll customize that for you. If you need help with this plugin, you can visit our help desk. Um, our times are a little delayed now because of some um, business issues that we're having, uh, especially during COVID-19 and stuff like that. So you may be a little bit delayed, but we do have a knowledge base that you can use that you may be able to address some of your issues with. The information that is contained here is very important to the setup um, of your support ticket. So make sure that you copy and paste this into your support ticket. That'll give us a better idea of what we're working with, what version you're using, uh, what PHP version, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so now let's go back up to the top. And the Google reCAPTCHA is a way to prevent people from spamming your um, initiation form and you can go in here and click on this link I'm not gonna click it right now but you can click on it go to Google sign up for a key put in those keys and then enable reCAPTCHA and it'll add that reCAPTCHA at the bottom of your contact your invoice form next if you're having issues with your theme something may be conflicting your header may be overflowing or something like that we actually gave you a way that you can create this file called header-contract.php and footer-contract.php just copy this information here and paste it into this file copy this and paste it into this file and that will remove some of the um, code that may be breaking the plugin because of how your theme is reacting to it um, this is kind of like a worst case scenario, but you do have the ability to modify the header and the footer of the contracts to not include your theme files if something's breaking. The advanced shortcode kind of tells you what you can do with some of the uh, additional shortcodes that aren't created by you. Like for example, if you want whenever you go to print it out, if you want to have a page break between certain content on your contract, you can add in this shortcode. If you want to create a form for your clients to be able to add a contract, you would take this and paste it into one of your front-facing pages, what we'll do shortly. Um, and then if you want to give them a way to show, um, see all of the contracts that they've signed, if they're a logged in user, you would uh, paste this into a front-facing page as well. Or you could paste this into a front-facing page and then send them a link that has like um, their email address in it. 
Um, you can also customize this with a type, so email list and then type equals test type, which would be your contract type here. So you can display specific contract types that you want rather than having all of them displayed at one time. So let's get into the meat of the plugin and we're going to work on the short codes and the templates. So right now I'm just going to add a few simple short codes so that it's this video is not very long, but we're going to add a short code here for the label. Um, and you have to keep in mind that whenever you're adding the short codes, they can't have um, any kind of non-alphanumeric characters. So it has to be something very similar to this. So let's say, for example, if I want to do a first name, and then I would come over here, and you have an open bracket, first name, and then you close that bracket. Now, for the function part, you can hover over it and see which one of these you know how the options need to be set up if you need a refresher but for the functions it's basically if you want it to have um, something auto calculate so let's say if we would use it we would use something where we need to have a deposit uh, so let's say it's a five thousand dollar website and we want to have a fifty percent deposit we would come in here and say that whatever short code we create for the project amount divided by two and then that would give us the result of twenty five hundred dollars instead of five thousand um, we're using the text selection right now, but we also have these other options so we can do a select box And then we can come over here for our options And if you hover over it, you can see red blue green and yellow is options. So you would do red blue Green and yellow in order to have those as selectable options inside of your select box But for now, we're just going to make this a text box This is the labels that would go underneath the text so let's say if you needed to have more information about a specific short code or a specific box um, for your clients to be able to know what they're entering in you would put something like this here so we're going to put please enter your first name and then we're going to uh, just leave it at that um, if you are creating a plug or uh, creating a short code to be a function then you need to check the box to be function only because you can't have a, a functional shortcode doesn't need to have input put into it. It's already getting its input based on whatever function that you created at the top. And also keep in mind that your functions at the top have to be mathematical functions. Uh, one of the issues that I see very often is the division by zero, and that's because you're expecting something to be entered into a box and you're using it in a, in a function, you're dividing it by something else. But there was nothing entered into the first box which makes it the way it's essentially dividing by zero, which is an error for the code. So we'll create a short code with a function in just a second as well. Um, the, uh, the next option is visible in front. This is going to be used in um, to coincide with the client add short code that I just showed you in the um, advanced short codes under the settings tab. Whatever we click visible on front end is going to make this become part of this form here that we're going to be building. Uh, the required is simply just to require it whenever you go. they go to enter information. It's a required option. Um, you can also uncheck this to make it a way they don't have to enter that information in. And then finally a prepared field. This is something that displays on the contract when they're going to sign it right above the signature line. Um, the reason why this is there is in case someone has a really bad signature and you can't tell who it is, you can put in a first name last name prepared fields however this is not supposed to be used as a way to fill out the contract because the information that's input into this box happens after they read the contract before they sign the contract so that's what makes this field and this field different this one shows as part of the form that they would enter before creating a contract this one shows after the contract has been created for them to complete the contract with so for right now, I'm going to leave these two checked and this one blank, and I'm going to create a new short code. Um, let's see, I want to have this one come first, and then we're going to do last name with our short code last name text, and then please enter your last name. And then this one's also going to be visible on front and required. Now we want to do another one, and let's say we want to do an email here. So let's do email address, and then email. And it's going to be a text again, 
then please enter your email address visible in front and required. So now let's add one for project cost just to have one on there. So project cost and we're just going to label this one as cost and it's going to be something that's visible to us not necessarily visible to the client that's going to be creating the contract. So we're not going to have visible in front or required or prepared field added for this one. And then lastly, we want to do deposit. And then we come over here, do deposit. And we're going to make this be a function where we're going to take this short code, cost, and we're going to divide by 2, which would give us half of whatever that cost is. And then down here, we're going to list this as a function only because we don't want it to display anywhere else. We just want this short code to be available that uses the functionality of this. So now let's hit modify short codes. And now we have these short codes available to us in our contract template. So whenever you're first getting started, then you go to your templates and you create a new one. You have all of these options that are available to you. So what I would do is basically copy this and paste it into a, a demo or a dummy contract in order for you to be able to see what information is being presented to you in your contract uh, plugin or short codes as well as the template itself. So contract link, business name, contract currency are all kind of default templates that you can see what they do here. Uh, basically it just displays a link. It's used only for the email notification so we'll get rid of this in our contract template. But the business name would display the business name you set up in the settings and then the contract currency will also display that in the, in that you set up in the settings. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and add this as a demo test. And we're going to save that. Now, what I want to do is make a form appear over here based on the short codes that we've selected. So if we go back to our settings and we go to advanced short code, we're just going to copy this client add and we're going to open up this page. So if we go to the pages, it should be the only page there. And we're going to add a short code and we're just going to paste in the short code and then we're going to update it. So now this should appear over here as a form to initiate a contract. And as you can see, it only added the ones that we set to be visible on the front. So let's go ahead and um, I want to uncheck auto redirect because I don't want it to do that. So let's go to our settings and we're going to auto uncheck the auto redirect. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say test at example.com and then test person and then we're going to initiate that contract and then it's going to give us that your contract has been submitted message which is configurable right here so now on the administration side of it we can see that we have a client initiated contract that's currently unsigned and the reason it didn't redirect them to the contract is because we have that field that we want to use for the proposal or the project cost so we're going to go in here to edit um, into a company name. I thought I did that. Let's go back to test company and save. I might not have saved it. All right, so let's go back to the contracts and we go to edit that. And now you can see all the options that are available to us as well as the information that they put into the, the uh, contract form that was over here. So let's go back to the website here so you can see it. So we put in test at example, first name test, last name person. We're going to come in here and say we want to have a $5,000 cost associated with whatever project this is. And then that'll fill out the template for us based on the short codes that we added to it. And it will also give us the ability to have that deposit amount as well. So we're going to come over here. We're going to use the contract template is going to be the demo test that we created. If we want them to go someplace else after they sign the contract, we can come in here and say we want to have it go to Google, for example. Um, if you have the need to have payment items available for each contract that's being created, you can come over here and select which amount it would be. In this case, it's going to be a deposit, and then we're just going to put in the email address as the payment item name shortcode. You can customize this to 
to pull from whatever short codes you wanted to pull from. Um, currently we don't have a representative short code but I'm just going to go ahead and put in first name because this is going to appear on the contract um, as our representative as well as in the list of contracts it's going to say who on our team created it. And then the client email short code is going to be the email address. Now we don't want to check can this contract be repeatedly signed because this is a one-to-one -one contract. However, if it was more of like a terms of service agreement, we would check this where when that contract link is hit, they sign it and it creates a new contract but keeps the original contract here so it can be signed multiple times. If we wanted to have a print only version of the contract, we can check this box to remove the signature box and basically make it an offline print where you can print it and sign it out. It creates a line for you. Um, the date and everything. Um, if we want to force the user to print their name we would click on this and it would give them a first name last name a box above the signature window in order for you to be able to see who signed it if they have a bad um, signature. This would actually add those prepared fields so let's say if you wanted to verify their email address whenever the contract is being submitted then you would set up an email as a prepared field and then you would check this box to force them to use that prepared field before they can submit the contract. And whenever we go to update the contract we can check on this and hit update in order for it to send an email address to whatever email that we have set up here. I'm not going to do this for now because it's just going to go to example.com. So let's hit update here. And now if we were to check that box, it would be sending an email to our customer in order for them to open up this link and sign it. And as you can see here, based on the template demo that I set up, we have the email address they entered, the first name and the last name, as well as the project amount, as well as the deposit amount that we put in there. Um, the other default options was the company name as well as the currency that we use. And then we also checked to require to have them print their name before they sign it. So I'm going to come over here and say test person and then I'm just going to sign it, hit save and then it's going to redirect me to Google but keeping this window open so that we could, if you have the add-on for download PDF, they would click on this to download the PDF or they can print the contract directly using whatever browser print functionality that they have or they can also come over here and say we're going to pay with PayPal and that should take the $2,500 value and add whatever fees that we have associated with it in our payment settings and then they would pay for that amount here. So now we're going to do it a different way where it actually redirects the person to the contract to sign it. So we're going to go into our short codes and like I said you can't use configurable options that need to be populated in real time like the deposit and the project cost was not something that you can use in real time because it's, this one's a function based off of this one and this one that you don't know what that cost is whenever the customer is creating the contract. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two short codes and I'm going to modify it then I'm also going to update our template to not include these two short codes. So let's save that again and now if we go to our settings we're going to come over here and we're going to check this box and we're going to use the demo contract template as the test. So we don't want to redirect them to another website or another page right now so let's come over here and now if we come back to our initiated contract page we're just going to refresh it for good measure and then we're going to come over here and say test again and then we're going to initiate the contract and instead of displaying that message saying that the contract will be approved and then they'll be notified it actually redirects them to the contract for them to sign it with all of the information that they had put into that box and then we come over here we're going to save the signature and now we have two contracts that have been signed that we can view here. So this is the original one that we configured the information on and then this is the client initiated one that we just set up. So there's another way that you can do this where it allows them to sign the contract multiple times. So what I want to do is I'm going to come over here and edit this contract. I'm going to remove the signature so it opens it back up again and then I'm going to if you have where it's like a terms of service and they can sign it multiple times you can't have them, they can't be redirected. 
So it's just a, an issue with the plugin that I'm working on, but for right now, it's you can't have it be redirected here, and you can't have it be redirected in the other place uh, in the settings as well. So we're going to come over here, and we are going to check this, can this contract be repeatedly signed box. So now, if we open up this contract again in a new window, I'm going to come over here to contracts. You can see that this one is currently unsigned. So if I was a customer and I'm going to say my name is test and I'm going to save the signature, it's going to redirect me to my own version of the contract. So if we come back over here and we refresh, this one still remains unsigned, whereas the one that we just signed is here. So I'm hoping that that's pretty clear. One of the biggest questions that I have is how come I can't add information to the contract in real time. As you can see here, it just displays the text that was entered previously, whether it was entered by the administrator or whether it was entered by the client themselves, the information is displayed. If you want to try to add a text box here in order to populate the contract, it's not going to work the way you want it to. You can try to do it with prepared fields, but those prepared fields are not supposed to be used that way. You can do it that way if you have a simplified version of your contract up here and you don't expect the prepared field values to be inside of that contract because they won't display there because technically they don't exist yet. It only gets to this point whenever it has a value that exists. So let's go over, um, let's go to, Let's go to our payment options for now. So as you saw earlier, there was a $25 fee that was added to that $2,500 to make it a total of $2025. And that's because we set it up here. But we can also come over here and instead of doing $25, we can do 10%. And whenever someone goes to sign it, that $2,500 then converts into $2,500 plus 10% of $2,500. Or we can just turn it off altogether. So I'm gonna change this back to $25 and I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and then I'm going to save it and then we come over to Stripe and I'm also going to turn off Stripe so you have all of these options as well you can gather this information from Stripe you can set up the fee that's associated you can require the zip code you can change the label change the logo that goes with it or the image that goes with it and you can do all of this um, you can read more about it here sign up for an account here you know so forth and so on so right now I'm just going to disable this and we're going to go back to the contracts that were signed this one specifically and see that no longer it no longer has those buttons at the bottom for you to be able to view that um, to be able to view the buttons to pay with PayPal or pay with a credit card So I'm trying to see what it, what else is available. Oh, the other templates. So there's um, this download PDF button that's here. You can configure the label from here. Basically, this controls pretty much all the other text that you can edit. If it's not here, then you can't edit it. If it is here, then you can edit it and have it update. So if I wanted to, instead of doing download PDF, I can click on download and you can see that button here changes. And again, this is only available if you have the generate PDF add-on. Um, so we're going to re-add this and then now you have your notification templates so whenever a new contract is created it's going to send you an email with that contract link shortcode that's reserved only for sending emails and then you can also create one if you need to update a contract uh, you want to send an email template to that as well so you can say uh, your contract was updated then you can also come over here and put in other information here so a contract that has been created has been created for you and modified you can view it here and then this will send them this email with this link and then you can also see the default shortcodes and you can use these shortcodes inside of this as well so if you have um, you know if you want to do you know first name like this you can do this as well so that it actually personalizes that contract that's being sent. 
Um, if you scroll down a little bit further, you have contract CSS. So essentially it just controls the CSS of this. So if you have some issues with uh, maybe the font's too big or it's using a weird font and um, modifying your header or footer files doesn't work, you can come in here and actually customize the CSS. Now, whenever you're doing this, please note that you can change the default style here, only change what you need, um, as this is most of it's specific to WordPress. So just be very careful whenever you're modifying the contract CSS or the print CSS. And with the print CSS, it's a little weird because in order to work properly with the JavaScript, it has to be on one line. Uh, line breaks break JavaScript, so make sure that whenever you're adding something here, it just, you know, just make it keep wrapping. Um, just have, have it on one line. All right, so let's go back up and we're going to go to available shortcodes. And this is just, again, going to reiterate the shortcodes that you have so that you can see what's available to yourself. Now, let's uh, look at some of the other data type options. So let's say we want to add a date box. We're going to create a date box and we're going to add the shortcode date. And then we're going to select the date type. So let's do select a start date and then we're going to make this also visible in front and required and now let's add another one for our representative so let's do rep and we'll just do a short code for rep and this is going to be text as well it's not going to be re required or visible in the front end and I'll show you why in just a second so if we go to our templates and we we're going to want to edit this in order for it to display a signature. And if you look at um, inside of your settings, I think maybe it's down here. No, it's not. So it's going to be in our documentation. So we're going to go to online contract documentation. And inside of that documentation, there is a way that I think it shows you how to add a person. I think it's assigned by is the class that it needs to be. And it's not on here so I will have to add that. So let's go over here and I'll just show you how to do it. So we're going to go to our templates and we're going to switch over to the code view and down here we're going to put in div class signed by and then we're going to add that rep shortcode. So that should be the only HTML you ever have to enter into it. Um, it's just because it's looking for that class in order to generate the font for the signature. So let's go back to our contracts. We're going to go back to this one and we're going to reopen it again. And then over here for the representative shortcode, we're going to select rep. And this is going to give us the representative shortcode inside of the, um, the contract list but I'm actually going to put um, test rep here and with the date text box whenever you go to click it it shows a nice little calendar that you can um, page back and forth through and it uses the default jQuery calendar from WordPress so it shouldn't cause any conflicts uh, we've had some issues in the past where it's caused conflicts so I rewrote this part of it so it should no longer cause any conflicts so we're just going to say that our start date is going to be um, tomorrow so let's go over here and hit update and now if we go to view that contract again you can see now test rep is in a fancy signature font and I did not add the date to the contract template so let me go and add that to the contract template so let's go down here and add the date and we'll just put it right here so let's save that and now if we go back to the contract we see that we have our select selected start date, the email address, the first name, last name, the signature of our representative, uh, which you can either do an image here and have it tied into a specific template, or you can use this, which should be sufficient for most uh, legal issues that you can see. Again, I'm not a lawyer, just a developer that likes to code, so verify with your lawyers whether or not this will be an accurate representation of your representative that signed it then we're going to sign it again and now all of the information is presented here to us in the same way that they saw it
Um, also, one thing to note, every time a contract is signed, it will send an email to the administrative account, the administrative email, um, letting them know that a contract has been signed, um, and as well as whenever they're initiated, you'll get an email. So another question that I get is whenever someone auto-initiates a contract, they sign it, they're not getting an email, um, and that's by design. It's not an error. It's actually whenever they are they fill out the form that was presented over here so they fill out this form they initiate the contract and then they sign the contract it doesn't send them an email because as you can see here whenever I go to save the signature I'm still on the contract I don't need to have an email that links me to the contract because I can download it or print print it from here so that's by design it's not an error but I see that it you know it's a big enough question that I have to address it but it's something that you should be aware of. Okay, so let's close out of some of these windows. And I think that we covered pretty much everything to do with creating a contract, signing a contract. So let's go over here and do our contract types. So I'm gonna create a contract type called open and I'm going to create another contract type called closed. So this is a good way to kind of differentiate your contract. You can put in you know, whatever kind of contract type that you want, but I'm going to come over here and say that this is now a closed contract. And then I want to display my closed contracts on the home page of this demo. So let's go back to our settings and advanced short codes and now we can come down here to this email list and I'm going to take this and just to verify it's open and closed so closed is the slug open is the slug so I'm going to come over here and say that I want to show only the closed contracts so let's come over here we're going to add another short code and we're going to say that we just want to display closed contracts and let's go ahead and move that up and then let's duplicate it and let's go ahead and add one for open just so you can see that it, you know, it's not going to show both of them so if we refresh this it says you do not have any open contracts because I'm not the email address that's associated with this um, this account is not the account that was you the email address that was used on the contract so I actually do not know what my email address is for this one. Um, yep, let's go here. And if we go to our contracts now, and we're going to have to, this one's closed. So let's edit this, remove the signature, and we're going to paste that email in here. So this way you can display your logged in users their uh, their contracts that are opened and closed or you know just a generic list of those contracts so let's open this up again I'm going to have to sign it and do that again and now if we refresh we can see that we have this contract that has been created for us that we have signed we currently don't have any open contracts so let's come over here to our contracts to this one that's not been signed yet we're going to label it as open. We're going to add in this information since it is required now. And we're going to change this email address. So if we hit update, now we should have two contracts. So this one is um, currently unsigned. This one is signed. If I go to, I can click on this to view the contract to print it again. Then I can click on this one to actually open it up and sign it. Um, so I think that that should cover most of the stuff that you'd want to do with the plugin. It's a very simple plugin that I think um, some people have some issues with because there, there's a lot of options in it. I try to give you as many options as I possibly could, but maybe I overdid the options. Um, but right now, I mean, it's it's simple once you want once you went through it once or twice and you get it to work. Um, so if you have any issues definitely open up a support ticket and let me know what your issue is so I can try to resolve it for you. But I hope this video helps you in the future whenever you're going to look at um, 
purchasing our plugin or using our plugin. The version 5 of this plugin is vastly different than our previous versions. It's a lot more fluid, it's a lot more functional, and it's a lot easier for us to be able to push out updates and it's compliant with the newest version of WordPress as well as the newest versions of PHP. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned how to use the plugin better. I know it was a long video, but hopefully you stuck through it. So thank you for either purchasing the plugin or looking at the plugin, and good luck with your installation.